Okay, up to, up to now our, our JavaScript has been uh, sequential in its execution. Uh, but now we're going to be getting into conditional, uh, which means you can have possibly two paths you can take. And then we'll be getting into some, some looping, and uh, that even alters the sequential, sequential approach quite a bit. Okay, let me uh, bring up Notepad. And we save this. So, uh, yeah, temp, and I'm gonna call this um, uh, grades.html. Change that to all files, and click save. Okay, so I got my HTML, got my header section, got my title. This will be um, grade calculation. And um, then uh, I'll leave a little bit of room for my JavaScript. Got my uh, closing my header section, uh, beginning my body, closing my body, and closing of my HTML. Now I'm going to um, bring in, uh, I guess, uh, four four grades. I'll bring in four grades, and um, I'll calculate the the average of those those grades. Or not the average. I'll, I'll um, find out, um, add them together, and divide by my total total points. Each one will be worth 100 points, and then I'll print A, B, C, D, or F um, based upon their grade. Okay, so I'm going to have um, let's say test one. This will be input uh, type equals text. I think it's and ID equals grade one, test one. Might as well name it same as uh, what I'm, my label says. And I got my line break. Test two, input type equals text. ID equals test two, my line break. Test three, Input type equals text. ID equals test three. Line break. And test four. Input type equals text. ID equals test four. And my line break. Now I'll have a button. Input type equals um, button value equals uh, calculate calculate okay on click I'm gonna run um, what am I gonna run what am I gonna call it um, uh, calculate grade calculate grade okay and then I'm, I'm gonna put my answer um, back into a uh, text text box. So percentage is input type equals text. I know a lot of students been using inner HTML, and that's fine. That's what the book likes to focus on. And I don't know why why I don't like that. Um, but it's there's nothing wrong with it. I don't got any logical reason why it's not good to use. Okay. Now, text boxes have a, definitely an issue too. We're going to see more, more um, items we can use besides text boxes and and um, buttons eventually. But okay, percentage and uh, grade. Input type equals text and ID equals grade. And then our not that I need another line break at the end, but okay. Let's come up here, and this will put our JavaScript. So script type equals text slash JavaScript. And slash script to close it. And I'll have my function, um, what do I call it? Calculate grade. Beginning curly bracket, go down a few, closing curly bracket. Um, I'll declare... Um, 
test one, test two, test three, test four. I'm gonna need um, what am I gonna need? Uh, a total, because I'm gonna add those together. So I'll call that um, uh, let me call it total. I was gonna call it sum, but um, I'm gonna make sure I don't use a reserve word. Um, what else do I need? I need the percent, percentage, and um. We'll start with those. Okay, test one is going to equal to float, parse float. Didn't sound right when I was saying it. And was it document dot get element by ID? And uh, what's it called? Test one dot value. Is it value or uppercase or lowercase b? I think lowercase. There we go. Test two equals parse um, float document dot get element by ID. Test two dot value. Test three is equal to parse float document dot get element by ID. Test three dot dot value. And um, test four is equal to parse float document dot get element by ID test four dot value. Our total will be the four added together. So I'm gonna say total is equal to test one plus test two plus test three plus test four. Then our percentage will be the total divided by 400. So percentage is equal to total divided by um, 400. And um, then I'm going to write that out. So um, document dot get element by ID. I think I called it percentage dot value is equal to percentage. Now the percentage inside the, the quotes here, that name there should match my ID name down here. It's not always a good programming practice to have percentage percentage having the same variable name, but I don't think it'll cause this problem in this case. Sometimes it will. And that's why um, I always recommend people name them a little bit different, but just for ease of programming, I'm, show, I'm showing it this way. Okay, so I'll save that. I'm going to right click on this and say open with Google Chrome. And uh, 50, 100, 80, 190, 80, 70. Okay, so. Um, that should give us 80 as a percentage? 85, is that right? Um, 150, 250, 250, 340, 340 divided by 85, 340, no calculator handy. Um, actually, I got a calculator on my other, cal my other computer. It'll take a minute to come up. 253, three, okay, 340. I'm still thinking. I'm doing this on my new new computer. Three forty divided by four. Eighty five. Okay. Now mine says point eight five, so I see an issue right there. I never uh, thought of when I was writing the program. When I calculate the percentage, I need to multiply times a hundred, wherever that's at. So up here, I need to take it times a hundred. But anyway, regardless, that looks like it's working now. <clears throat> now for our grade, this is where our if statement comes in. So I'm going to say if percentage is greater than or equal to 90, then I want to um, uh, do something. 
So I'll put my beginning curly bracket and my closing curly bracket. Now what I'm going to do, so up here, let me um, create a new variable called grade. And here I'll say grade is equal to A. Now I want to uh, continue down here and I want to nest, nest these uh, if statements. So I'll say else if percentage is greater than or equal to 80. Then say grade is equal to B. Guess I'll put some semicolons on those. Now the if statement shouldn't have semicolons at the end on those. Else, if percentage is greater than or equal to 70. Now I'll explain what's happening here if it actually works. So I'm going to run it first and, and see before I um, start going into that. I've learned that in the past. Don't sit there and uh, assume you wrote what you wrote is going to actually work. And start explaining it like you know what you're talking about. And then you run it and it doesn't work. Sometimes it takes some tweaking and uh, programming. Although I suppose that's the uh, definition of that has changed nowadays. Take some modification programming wise. Grade is equal to F. Okay. Now I need to write that out. So I'm going to say document.get element by ID, and I think I actually called it grade. Dot value is equal to grade. Okay, let's save this. And we'll go refresh. And uh, 100, 90, 80, 70. Calculate. Get a B. Okay, if I put in all hundreds, click calculate. Get an A. 60, 30, 65, 72. Don't get an A, we get a, we should get an F. Okay, that's not working. Put 100 there. Should be a D. I thought B was working. Okay, B's working. C's working. D and F are not working. What did I do wrong? Da. Percentage, if I can spell, is greater than equal to 60. Okay, so let's refresh this. 60, 60, 60, 60. D, if I change one of those to 2. F. Okay, it's working now. Well, I don't like my formatting. Um... At least put a line break after the button, looks like. There we go. Okay, so now if I do um, 2, 3, 4, 5, click calculate. Um, problem with this is, why some people like enter HTML better, is I can come here and change that to an A. And... Um, and then I could print this off and um, say, hey, well, your, your program said I got an A in the course. You know, why, why do I have an F? Uh, the idea behind using inner HTML, in case you're curious, is they cannot go and change it like you just saw me do. Um, so in some cases, you want to lock down the results so people can't uh, manually go in and change it and then claim something. Now, of course, I'm not going to use this for grades, so it's not a big deal. Or if I did, I'd put a disclaimer on there um, of some sort. But uh, that's uh, showing the if statement. Now let me explain it. Let's assume my percentage is 92%. It comes down here, it checks to see if percentage is greater than or equal to 90, and it is. It's greater than 90. So it does this bit of code right here. 
Now once it finishes, it kicks out of this uh, loop completely and comes down to here. Okay, now let's pretend that our grade is uh, 85. It comes down here, it checks if uh, percentage is greater than equal to 90, and it's not because it's 85. Then it kicks down to this next else. And um, since it's uh, 85, then it would be greater than or equal to 80. And it would run this bit of code and then kick down here. It wouldn't even check all the rest. Um, and then, let's say my grade is 30. Comes down, it's not greater than or equal to 90. So it comes down here, checks this, not greater than or equal to 80. Comes down, checks this, not greater than or equal to 70. Comes down here, checks this, not greater than or equal to 60. And then comes down here and else, this else, it, no matter what, if all the rest above fails, it'll do this no matter what. And then it'll print out the grade to the, the web page. Anyway, that's our grade calculation program.